This study was part of a larger study, which was called Ziva, which is D vitamin intervention in VA. It was a year-long supplementation with high-dose vitamin D, D2 specifically, ergocalciferol, to African-American men, uh, veterans, with pre-diabetes, as defined by hemoglobin A1C glycemic index. And then as a mechanistic or pathogenetic part of diabetes, of diabetes development, we decided to evaluate gut bacteria. So we wanted to compare uh, gut bacteria composition or signature in this man with various levels of glucose. So we did oral glucose tolerance test. And by this test, we found that we have groups of men with what is called normal glucose tolerance that we can call normal. And with overall impaired glucose metabolism, they divided into impaired uh, fasting glucose and impaired um, glucose tolerance together and diabetes. So we if we compared the lowest and the highest quartiles, meaning the lowest and the highest groups of people with calorie intake and with fat intake, we found that so-called microbiota or bacteria signature was different. Also, it was different by glycemic index. The lowest and the highest glycemic index groups had different microbiota. And same was true for lowest and highest vitamin D level groups. So at present, there is uh, a lot of research in this area, and so far we cannot apply it directly. However, having said that, I should say that there is a study that was done and published in 2013. A group of researchers from Netherlands did transplantation of microbiota from lean donors to men with metabolic syndrome. And those men lost a little bit of weight, but the main part was that they improved their glucose tolerance just in six weeks. So we can say that future of diabetes treatment may be with microbiota. You can do transplant, you can do uh, microbiota in a pill, which already exists, but it's not FDA approved. It's just a supplement called a probiotic. You can go and buy it. And there is food that promotes uh, growth of healthy bacteria in your gut. This is called um, prebiotics. We can deduct that when I, for example, as physician, recommend something to the patient, I have another evidence that it's good. It's actually food. Predominantly, it is still food that can change your microbiota. Mm. In mice model, it was very nicely shown that when you change your food, you change your microbiota, you change your inflammation, you can cause diabetes. And when, for example, you eliminate the part of microbiota, it would be no diabetes. But on the other hand, we have to understand that we cannot survive without bacteria. It's complete symbiosis.